Yesterday, Ship 25 de-stacked from Booster 9 yet again, but not before the pair completed a complex fueling test and launch rehearsal earlier this week. The tower, the size of a skyscraper, activated a pair of giant mechanical arms to disassemble the largest rocket ever built. The arms carefully grabbed Starship using hardpoints under its flaps and lifted the 50-meter tall second stage and spacecraft off of Super Heavy Booster 9. This tower, finally called on by its nickname Mechazilla lowered the 100-ton vehicle hundreds of feet down to a waiting stand. This D-stack is hopefully the final one ahead of launch, allowing for SpaceX to close a few gaps left in its heat shield and will likely also conduct careful inspections to ensure that the Starship is ready for flight. Then, shortly before the launch date, the flight termination system must be certified before restacking. Starship, the world's largest rocket, may then fly again from South Texas as soon as as November 6th, as some notices were discussed in the last episode. However, Starship fans should temper their expectations for an early November launch. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service said in an emailed statement Thursday that it just initiated the review, a consultation under the Endangered Species Act, with the Federal Aviation Administration on October 19th. The FWS now has as long as 135 days to create an updated biological opinion about how Starship Starship and its launches impact the local environment. However, the agency does not expect to take the full amount of time, a representative said in the statement. Such testing is unpredictable and susceptible to change, and the commercial space company still needs a Federal Aviation Administration license to launch the craft. SpaceX must address all safety, environmental, and other regulatory requirements before the FAA will approve the launch license, agency spokesperson Steve Colm said in an email on Wednesday. The Starship program the program is also under an additional environmental review process, Colm wrote. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is reviewing and consulting with the FAA about a draft update of the biological assessment under the Endangered Species Act. Despite the regulatory hurdles, SpaceX has pressed on with testing of the 400-foot-tall spacecraft and its launch pad. On Tuesday, SpaceX fueled the Starship and Super Heavy booster with more than 10 million pounds of propellant in a flight-like rehearsal. SpaceX also tested its recently installed deluge system that sprays hundreds of thousands of gallons of water across the bottom of the launch pad to dampen the noise, heat, and force of the Super Heavy Booster's 33 Raptor engines. The Fish and Wildlife Service is reviewing the environmental impacts of the deluge system that sends tons of water that have been exposed to heat, chemicals, and contaminants into sensitive wetland habitats that are home to endangered species, including piping plovers, red knots, and sea turtles. Environmental advocates have pointed out that SpaceX apparently does not have proper permitting for the deluge system. The Clean Water Act says it is illegal to dump pollutants into waters without a permit. According to the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality, which enforces the Clean Water Act in Texas, SpaceX has only a stormwater permit for the launch site. SpaceX's road to the second launch of the fully stacked Starship has been rocky so far. Starship's maiden flight on April 20th obliterated the concrete under the launch pad, creating a rock tornado that threw debris thousands of yards and created a dust plume that coated Port Isabel six and a half miles away. The rocket reached an altitude of 24 miles before tumbling out of control and exploding over the Gulf of Mexico. The Fish and Wildlife Service and the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department have been working to clean up debris on state-owned lands to minimize impacts to the habitat as much as possible, Busick wrote. The debris cleanup is continuing this week. Space SpaceX has to wait for the complete review from the FWS and then wait again for the FAA to sign off on the second test flight. This could be a few weeks to another few months away, but then you have to consider that lawsuit that seems to still be working through administrative processes that could end up prolonging things even further. SpaceX seems to be making the most out of the time it has. Multiple new Starship vehicles and Super Heavy boosters are being produced and tested across the Starbase facility. It seems like we're all the way up to at least Starship 31 in the manufacturing line, with more certainly in earlier stages of production. Can a decision be announced next week? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Up next, we have NASA's first moon spacecraft for astronauts in half a century is coming together. The Orion spacecraft for Artemis II set to fly around the moon in 2024 with a crew of 
4 saw its crew and service modules joined at NASA on October 19th. Next will come a rigorous series of tests to ready it for the big lunar journey, agency officials said in a statement. The team will power up the combined crew and service module for the first time, NASA officials stated on October 23rd. After power-on tests are complete, Orion will begin altitude chamber testing, which will put the spacecraft through conditions as close as possible to the environment it will experience in the vacuum of deep space. The Orion spacecraft includes the European Space Agency's service module built by Airbus Defense and Space, which provides electricity, propulsion, air, and water. A U.S. crew module led by Lockheed Martin will house the four astronauts and a U.S. crew module adapter that joins the service and crew modules together and connects their electrical, data, and power systems. ESA's service module arrived at NASA's Kennedy Space Center about two years ago in October of 2021, undergoing tests ahead of the big join-up at the Neil Armstrong Operations and Checkout Building nearby the Florida launch pad. Two important tests include the thermal cycle test, which assessed how well the spacecraft will withstand the extremes of temperature, and the direct field acoustic test, which assessed how well the spacecraft will withstand the vibrations of its launch to the moon, ESA officials wrote in their own statement on Tuesday, October 24th. Noting the joining of the modules is a milestone as the U.S. and European-made modules are now communicating with each other. The crew and service modules are connected at six points surrounding surrounding the crew module's heat shield, ESA officials added. Data and power connections and pipes for fluids between the sections are routed to go around the heat shield instead of crossing it, they added. In 2024, ESA's statement added, more construction milestones will accrue, adding the solar wings, filling the tanks with propellant, then connecting the completed Orion with the launch abort system that will rocket astronauts to safety in the event of an anomaly. All of this will be mounted on NASA's powerful Space Launch System rocket for launch day. Astronaut training is continuing for Artemis II. Coming up soon will be Earth orbit operations at NASA's Johnson Space Center, such as camera training for geology operations, medical training, and a simulated recovery exercise for Splashdown Day are coming up soon as well. Other big check marks of note in recent weeks include a liftoff dress rehearsal and geology training. And for our final piece of news today, three new astronauts have arrived at China's Tiangong Space Station following launch from the Gobi Desert late Wednesday. A Long March 2F rocket tipped with the Shenzhou-17 spacecraft lifted off from the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center in the Gobi Desert at 11.14 p.m. Eastern on October 25th. The spacecraft separated from the upper stage 10 minutes later. Zhou Peng, commander of the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center, announced the launch as a complete success. Rendezvous and docking at Tiangong's forward docking port was completed six and a half hours later at 5.46 a.m. October 26th. China's Human Spaceflight Agency confirmed. The Shenzhou-17 astronauts will soon be greeted aboard Tiangong by the Shenzhou-16 crew, who will hand over control of the station and depart for Earth on the 31st of this month. The Shenzhou-17 crew is composed of Commander Tang Hongbo, a veteran of Shenzhou-12, the first mission to visit Tiangong's Tianhe core module in 2021, and former Air Force pilots Tang Shangjie and Zhang Xinlin. The trio will spend around six months aboard Tiangong, or literally translated in English, the Heavenly Palace. Shenzhou-17 is China's sixth crewed mission to the Tiangong and the country's 12th overall. The astronauts will perform maintenance tasks, conduct science experiments, and outreach events. They will also perform a first extravehicular activity to carry out experimental maintenance operations outside the Tiangong, according to Lin Shi Chang, Deputy Director of the China Manned Space Engineering Office, speaking at a press conference on October 25th. Lin stated that preliminary inspections found that the space station's large solar arrays were repeatedly hit by tiny particles, causing minor damage. Shenzhou-17 will receive the Tianzhou-7 cargo spacecraft to the Tiangong in the first half of 2024. They will hand over the station to the Shenzhou-18 crew at the end of their six months in orbit. Well, folks, that's it for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching, and if you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking that link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.